Good morning. Welcome. Let us rise. Come and be filled here at this table. Food for all who hunger and drink for all who thirst. Drink of his love, wine of salvation. Shall live forever in Jesus Christ the Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. To serve with these sacred mysteries as we remember our ministers in the church and pray for their faithfulness and commitment. Let us come before God, asking for mercy and his pardon. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brothers and sisters, grant, we pray, that they may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, this is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I see how stiff-necked this people is. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation." But Moses implored the Lord his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with such great power and with so strong a hand? Why should the Egyptians say, With evil intent he brought them out, that he might kill them in the mountains and exterminate them from the face of the earth. Let your blazing wrath die down. Relent in punishing your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and all this land that I promised, I will give your descendants there as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Our response to this reading Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Our fathers made a calf in Horeb, 
and adored a molten image. They exchanged their glory for the image of a grass-eating bullock. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. They forgot the God who had saved them, who had done great deeds in Egypt, wondrous deeds in the land of Ham, terrible things at the Red Sea. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Then he spoke of exterminating them, but Moses, his chosen one, withstood him in the breach to turn back his destructive wrath. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Praise to you, O Lord, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Lord, Son of the living God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, O Lord, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Lord, Son of the living God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jews, If I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is not true. But there is another who testifies on my behalf, and I know that the testimony he gives on my behalf is true. You sent emissaries to John, and they testified to the truth. I do not accept human testimony, but I say this so that you may be saved. It was a burning and shining lamp. For a while, you were content to rejoice in its light. But I have testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father gave me to accomplish, these works that I perform testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. Moreover, the Father who sent me has testified on my behalf but you have never heard his voice nor seen his form, and you do not have his word remaining in you because you do not believe in the one who are sent, we are sent. You search the scriptures because you think you have eternal life through them. Even they testify on my behalf. But you do not want to come to me to come to have life. I do not accept human praise. Moreover, I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I came in the name of my Father, but you do not accept me. Yet if another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept praise from one another and do not seek the praise that comes from the only God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. The one who will accuse you is Moses, in whom you have placed your hope. For if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me, because he wrote about me. But if you do not believe in his writings, how will you believe my words? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. In the conversation between God and Moses, God introduces the conversation and says, go down to your people that you brought out. <laughs> Who brought those guys out of the place? Is it Moses or God through Moses? Hello? <laughs> it is God who sent this guy to go and bring them out. But whom they have become, they have to take responsibility of whom they have become. Deviant, rebellious, turning against God. 
So God is saying, this is who you have become. This is not the people I brought out. Go to your people. In the conversation, Moses replies and says, why should your anger blaze against your people? <laughs> That's an interesting conversation. God says, go to your people. Look what they have become. Look who they have become. Those are not the people I took out of slavery because we had a commitment, an agreement that they were to be faithful to me and I'll be faithful to them. All the way from the beginning of the world, I wanted to be faithful to these guys. But look whom they have become. Go and tell them. Moses says, uh, no, don't blaze against your people. Remember from the time of Abraham, Jacob and Isaac? Mentioning those three is reminding God of his faithfulness that does not fail. So the lesson here is, Human beings can change their allegiances, their faithfulness, their commitments, depending on the immediate needs and desires of life. And they sometimes need immediate results. When these guys needed their needs to be satisfied, their immediate desires to be addressed, they had to find immediate solution to that. So they changed their allegiance from the God who took them out of slavery to what they thought would bring them the results and answers to their questions and to their aspirations and desires of life. Human beings can be influenced to change allegiances, commitment, and faithfulness. The lesson is God remains faithful to his commitment and his faithfulness comes with mercy. When Moses pleads with God, he relents. He does not punish them. His faithfulness is always accompanied with mercy. And you cannot receive mercy unless you have been judged already. That's why you read somewhere in the scripture, justice and mercy have embraced. Our God is faithful and his faithfulness is accompanied with Mercy. Whenever we go wrong, he comes to us with his faithfulness and mercy. But then, all that said and done, when Jesus is doing the work of God to fulfill these promises that God had promised his own people, these guys do not accept him. He tries to remind them even from the time of Moses but they have not accepted him. And he introduces this and says, remember, I do not mind about human praise and testimony because he knew their testimony, their faithfulness, their allegiances might change, but they had three constant testimonies that are going to stand. And these are in three levels. One, his relationship with God is father and son. And his father gives a true testimony of his son. And he tells us, he teaches us in one way to know that our father, God, has a relationship with us. And his testimony upon our lives or about our lives is important. So we have to evaluate our relationship with God. That whatever we do, whatever we say, our practice of faith, our lives, is it according to the ways of our Father? Is it according to the ways of God? Can God give testimony that the life I'm living is good? Can God give testimony that my actions in the world is according to his teaching? So if that testimony of God, when we evaluate our relationship with him and say, the life I'm leading is according to God's will, is according to God's demand on my life, that testimony stands because God gives a true testimony. He is our father. He gives a true testimony to his sons and daughters, for we are his sons and daughters through baptism. So we have that relationship to the father. So we have to evaluate our relationship in that level, that our lives can be approved 
by God. Say, the way I live my life, God can give testimony to it. That's level number one. Level number two, the testimony of the scripture is what I'm doing according to the teaching of the scripture. Is my life in accordance with the teachings of the scripture? Because all the scriptures speak about Christ, and Christ has taught us how to live our lives. Is my life in line with the teachings of the scripture? Is my commitment, my allegiance in line with the teachings of the scripture, or it is outside the scripture? Then the third level is the works, our behavior, our character. Can my behavior, my character, my works witness to the faith that I profess? Do my works speak well of me? Do my words speak good of me? Do my actions speak well of my faith? Jesus says, my works give witness that the Lord sent me. Do our works, our words give witness that we are Christians? Or they create doubt whether we are Christians or not. Or they outrightly say, that must not be a Christian. If, for example, you are speaking behind a curtain and somebody does not see you, whatever you are saying in your private rooms or whatever, or other places, if somebody was listening, would somebody say, oh, the one speaking on the other side is a Christian? Or they would say, oh dear, that's a rotten fellow. Do our works, actions, character, behavior, life, speak of us as Christians, or they speak against our Christianity, against our faith. Those are the few of the things we have to reflect about in today's celebration of the Mass and see where, where are we? Before we come to our God and say, okay, remember me, O Lord, as you favor your people. Before we count ourselves in there saying, remember me also, as you favor your people, let us examine our relationship with him, our life in accordance with the scripture, and whether our actions, character, behavior, and life speak well or good about our faith. Then we present ourselves at Easter and say, Remember me, Lord, when you favor your people. Count me in there. Or you go back to him like Moses. Remember, I am your daughter. Remember, I am your son. And you promise to be faithful. Relent, please, don't punish me. Have mercy on me. Or we come back and say, Lord, thank you very much for the grace. I've evaluated myself. I present myself for your mercy and love. And now let us present our petitions to the Lord for our needs and the needs of other people. For the church during this Lenten season, may the Holy Spirit continue conforming our hearts to the life and love of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who shape public policy, may the Lord open their hearts to hear and respond in justice to the cries of those with no voice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the terminally ill, may the peace of Christ enfold them in their time of suffering and grant them a holy and happy death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families, may God bless their sacred bonds and strengthen their love for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may the angels come to greet them and lead them to the heavenly Jerusalem. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of those special petitions and prayer needs that you hold within the quiet of your hearts.
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions for this Mass, for Jewel Newman and Ken Green. And now at this time, I invite you to join me in praying the prayer for vocations. Hopefully you'll have the card with you. Uh, O God, our Father, you have called us in baptism to follow your Son, Jesus, through lives of loving service to you and to one another. Grant us your assistance guided by the Holy Spirit to live out our vocation in life. We pray especially for those who have answered your call as priests, brothers, sisters, deacons, and lay ministers. Keep them faithful in following your Son and dedicated in serving their brothers and sisters. Grant that many more men and women will be open to the challenge of dedicating their lives in the ministry of building your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We make these petitions through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With a humble spirit and a contrite heart, may be accepted by your Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his church. Holy Father, whose son chose to wash the disciples' feet and so to set as an example, accept, we pray, the oblations of our service and grant that offering ourselves a spiritual sacrifice we may be filled with a spirit of humility and zeal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with the countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his person, he took bread and giving thanks, he said a blessing, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that in partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring out the fullness of charity together with friends of our Pope, Gustav, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now together, let us pray to the Father, the words our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, allowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptations. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from our distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May we offer each other that sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we, called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. And now, together with our brothers and sisters unable to receive the body of Christ, let us make a spiritual communion with them. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. 
I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I can know that this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Then who could stand? But with you there is mercy and forgiveness and a guiding hand. Remember your love and your faithfulness, O Lord. Remember. sound of my call and answered me. My heart cries out for your presence. It is you I see. Before all the mountains were begotten and the earth took shape, even then, O oh Lord, you are refuge throughout every age. Remember your love and your faithfulness, O oh Lord. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to your servants, whom you have replenished with heavenly food and drink, that for the sake of your glory the salvation of, and the salvation of believers, they may be found faithful as ministers of the gospel, of the sacraments, and of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Bow your heads for God's blessing. O oh God, protector of all who hope in you, bless your people, keep them safe, defend them, prepare them, that free from sin and safe from the enemy, they may persevere always in your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. As we gathered at your table, as we listen to your word, help us know, O God, your presence. Let our hearts and minds be stirred. Nourish us with sacred story till we claim it as our own. Teach us through this holy banquet how to love love's victory known. Nourish us with sacred story till we claim it as our own. Just through this 